thank you, Deb, for can, you know rounding. You're actually kind of bringing up bringing up the rear here of our free BSD week, free BSD day uh, interviews that we've been having in live streams. We talked to a lot of great guests this week. Uh, you know, Wednesday was a busy day where we had six interviews. We started with Ed. You know, we talked with Colin in release engineering. We talked to a, a handful of users. Um, talked to an intern who's now a full time coder. It was um, exciting day of content that we had on Wednesday. It was a long day. I was, um, yeah, I actually missed a couple of live streams. But the cool thing was that I was able just to click on, um, you know, those talks, and I was yep. able to watch them right away, which was great. But yeah, yep. you, you have to be pretty exhausted from this whole week of, I was going to say yeah. like partying, but I'll say celebration. Maybe yeah. really partying to, uh, to BC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, BC may be partying. We're, we're celebrating <laughs> and we're celebrating by, uh, by sharing with the community, um, a, you know, some of our user stories and some of the successes. And we had a lot of really good co blog content that, we highlighted this week um, showing some of the big wins from the technology side, you know, to not uh, to not leave anything out. But, you know, the 14, the 14.0 and 14.1 release, we highlighted that content earlier in the week. So um, it, it was it, it was exciting to hear about the the advancements we're seeing in FreeBSD, the technologies that people really like and um, and how excited the community is. So, you know, coming back a little bit into our history, I mean, Deb, you've been uh, with the project for what, 18 years, 20 years? I think it's been 18 now. 18 yeah. years. Yeah. So what what led you to, you know, joining FreeBSD in, in 18 years ago? I know it's asking a lot to think back to what you were doing 18 years ago. I don't even know what I was doing 18 years ago, but can you talk about a little bit of the history of FreeBSD and the foundation? Yeah, um, we, um, so I wasn't familiar at all with open source and because I always worked on proprietary um, software and firmware. Mm -hmm. And um, I just happened to be connected with Justin Gibbs, who's our president and founder. And so he founded the foundation in 2000 and he had a day job and, and there's a whole reason behind why he started it. Um, but but initially it was to have like a organization that stayed around always because mm -hmm. volunteers and, and contributors come and go. But the foundation, yep. its purpose is to always be here. And uh, we could be a legal entity for, for the project as well as an IP. So, so after five years, Justin realized that we, there was a lot of potential for the FreeBSD Foundation to support the project. And he, he needed someone to step in and to run the organization. And so, um, so we met up, we were connected by um, a, a mutual friend. And, um, and so we met for lunch and he wanted to bring someone in who had like engineering background, but also he thought was organized. I had run my own business for many years. And so, um, so anyway, so I started with the foundation and at first it was a lot of like administrative stuff. We never had any employees. I started as a contractor cause that's what mm -hmm. I was doing, um, as a firmware engineer. And, um, so anyway, we've, we've grown quite a bit in those 18 years. Yeah. So can you, any, anything specific area of growth or something that you're proud of that you want to, highlight to the community that's listening in on listening into this live stream today um well i mean really i'd say just in the last couple of years the the growth um we've except we it's funny because justin and i sort of refer to it as uh free the foundation 1.0 to 2.0 and this is when we decided to take uh, some of our investments and um invest it in uh, more software development work. And so we mm -hmm. did, we hired a few people full time. We brought on more contractors and that was um, about two, a little more than two years ago. And then just in the last year, uh, we've, we've recognized that we needed someone to step in to work 
with commercial users. And, um, and so we brought in Greg Wallace to take over um, partnerships and, um, and also um, doing research for us. And then also we added to your team. And so we brought in a technical writer uh, who's been producing a lot of contact content as well as the rest of the team. And then brought in you, Kim, to head up our whole marketing organization. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say like those are like the key things and just the, more recently in the last year. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I really think that, um, yeah, I'm going to sit here and break my arm a little bit by patting myself on the back. Um, I mean, the, the changes in terms of like the number of views on our webpage and our social interactions and um, comments on our content and the n a number of times that um, one of the one of the things that I like tracking in the advocacy area is how many how many articles are being written about free BSD that I I haven't even asked it, them to be written and just the number of these that have been written um, it has grown exponentially it's you know is in these past six months that I've been working with the advocacy and and it it's it's easy this is easy to do because it's we have such a great story to tell and as soon as you know when I was at State of OpenCon and just started talking to users, you know, they just started coming out of the woodwork and wanting to tell their story about free BSD use. You know, that first event was um, very eye-opening and very successful and kind of really catapulted ourselves in telling these user stories. So um, we have a user stories on our webpage for anybody who hasn't been out there to take a look at it. We uh, the team has, we've written, um, I don't know, I don't have the number off the top of my head. It's probably seven or eight uh, corporate type organizational case studies. And then um, Drew on, a, on my our team and myself, we've been talking to users one-on-one -on -one and recording these kind of videos. So it's, to me, Deb, it's been really exciting to be able to share how people are using through BSD in everyday life and in their organizations. Yeah, it, it's big. And um, it, the user stories have been great. I mean, um, at, at BSD CAN, I was I was there with Drew and he would ask someone, we would be talking to someone at the table and he'd say, oh, we would love to get your story and, um, mm -hmm. you know, can I interview you? And, you know, most people in the tech world don't want that. They're not comfortable with that. But it's really, but uh, but the nice thing is that I would say like 75% of the people we talked to were willing to do it. And then the other, everyone was willing to be interviewed, but, um, but also Drew would say, you know, it's, if you're not comfortable, then I would love to just interview you in, in writing. And so we were doing that too. And, um, but the, for me, the best part about having these interviews that you folks have been doing, you and your team, um, is when when it's recorded like this, you can see you really can see that passion yes. that people mm -hmm. have for free BSD, and so um, and so when others see that, it's um, you know it's contagious, and yeah, and that's the best part about these conferences too is that you know people people are talking to each other and they're meeting people. They Maybe they've even been communicating over IRC or forums or Discord. And when they meet the person they've been talking to in person, um, you know, it's it builds a whole nother connection. And mm -hmm. people leave so energized and inspired. Yep. And usually they have some, you know, plan to continue working on something that they just learned about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We, I, I do love those user stories we've been doing. Um, so what do you, you know, we're, we're halfway through the year here. Um, what are you looking forward to in the second half of the year for the foundation and for the, pro well, for the foundation and the work that you're doing with the project? Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I am excited about the new core team. That's what, what yeah, me too. Me too. I'm really folks. excited to meet each one of them and, and talk yeah. about and do a video highlight of them too. So anyway, core yeah, team, but I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, part of our work is is working with core as well as the community. Um, but it's but it's great to have that turnover, have new uh, new blood in, um, and people always have uh, sort of their ideas of what they would like mm -hmm. to work on. Uh, for us. Um, 
working on. So our path or our goals this year has been focused on increasing the adoption of FreeBSD and um, improving mm -hmm. desktop support as well as hardware support is, is big. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and increasing the visibility of FreeBSD. And so Kim, you talked about like a lot of things that your team is doing in that area and um, and really trying to, you know, and what you're doing, promoting like where is FreeBSD already rock solid, which is in a lot mm -hmm. of areas. And yeah. Um, and so just in, in producing just so much content articles, we're getting more interviews to talk about this, but also to um, identify like what, you know, what is missing and what should we prioritize? What should we step in and support? And so we've been getting input from uh, commercial users, from working groups, from uh, we recently had a community survey and um and oh, speaking of in the community survey, which was really cool, was that like 93% of the respondents were had a positive experience with FreeBSD, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. That is great. So, That's a good number. Holy crap. I think know, about that. Was, 93%. That's and I think it was like uh, remarkable. Respondents was, I always want to say, like, you know, it was close to 1500, but it was just yeah. under. It was like, I think the exact number, like 1433 or something like that. But we had a really good yeah. uh, response on that. And that was a project uh, with that we did with CORE. So CORE came up with most of the questions. We worked with CORE on those questions because that informs us too on what should we be doing. And yeah. um, so, you know, so over half of our budget does go directly to software development. We have software developers on staff and which is great for the project because by having people on staff, then they're available to step in and, and fix issues. If, you know, if there's any vulnerabilities reported, they step mm -hmm. in right away and, you know, and, and look into that. Um, but also implement like features and functionality that we're hearing mm -hmm. from like, you know, all these input um, streams. And, um, and then actually, um, when we talk about increasing visibility, like I mentioned, all the work that, that you folks are doing, um, I think, I can't remember what percentage of our budget, but we did increase our budget. I mean, we're investing a lot of money this year and next and, and using our reserves right now um, to cover this. Um, and, uh, but anyway, but increasing the visibility is, is really yeah. making sure we're getting the word out to um, the people who are making the decisions to use FreeBSD. And this could be, um, you know, commercial users. So in the business world, mm -hmm. but also um, individuals out there and um, and young people. And so um, when I think about the um, the work that we're doing and supporting, one is uh, GSOC, the Google Summer of Code. Yeah. And we don't talk about this a whole lot, but we're in, I think, so they are in their 20th year of of running this program and um then we've been involved so you have to actually apply and then and be accepted and there's a lot of projects that apply for this and every year we've been accepted and this year we had 23 applicants and wow. which is amazing i think it's the most applicant applicants that we've had um early on we may have had a similar number i can't mm -hmm. remember um well that was before my time but anyway um but we have, so we actually have 11 GSOC projects going on. And, and the whole reason why 23 weren't accepted because some of them apply for the same uh, project. And, um, and so we actually get, so first it shows interest um, in FreeBSD from young people. And when they are involved in the GSOC program, uh, almost always uh, those, those young folks, uh, uh, student, well, they're not always students. Um, stay with FreeBSD. And then sometimes we actually hire them as interns. So I think last mm -hmm. year was year, I think there were five out of six or seven that stayed with the project. And um, I think we hired about four or five as interns. Wow. So, and that's a good percentage number as well that, you know, five out of seven of them wanted to continue working on the project. And then this year we had 23 applicants and yeah, I, I, I was looking at those numbers and the numbers of, of of people that we have applying to be in the program and then work on the 
projects has grown every year. So it's, it, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And it's, yeah. To me, it, it tells a it tells a, a story that um, that people want to be working with FreeBSD, and so that's why I continue to try to tell that story as well. You know, just through the advocacy efforts that we have going on. Yeah, I think it's really telling when when you're seeing young people interested in FreeBSD because what do they hear in schools? And we're trying to change this too. You know, they hear about Linux, which is great. But um, but I think what attracts a lot of young people to FreeBSD, and maybe Mitchell, when you interviewed him, maybe he touched on this because he was one of our, our interns, um, is that uh, because we're a smaller project, but we've been around for a long time, so we have a lot of history. Um, but since we are smaller, it's easier, uh, it, it's easier to make a like impactful contribution. So, so first, like, it's, it's a great way to, to learn systems programming because we have smaller code base. And, um, and so, uh, so we get a lot of students for that reason, uh, but also because there's less people involved with the project, um, you can pick an area. And actually Mitchell is a great example of this that he joined us as a co-op student from University of Waterloo, which we also work with. And um, he started, getting involved in risk and he um he actually became sort of one of the like the main um yeah. I don't know if you'd say like main maintainers of it but uh yeah, of the he, of the risk five work with free yeah. yeah he mm -hmm. just he he just sort of fell in love with that work and it actually was a great opportunity for him to become one of the main like developers um and, and more, you know, and, and so he's, he's, he was able to learn from the people who are already working in that area, but it was a great growth opportunity for him. And he's still uh, working for us in that area. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's really he was our student. second. Yeah, he was our second um, in, interview yesterday. So if you want to learn more about Mitchell, you can go check that out. So yeah, Deb, let's, um, you know, any last words that you have for our community today on this live stream before we end it and let everybody get back to their Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. Fridays are great. Um, well, really, yeah. First, I want to just say thank you to everyone who's watching and just everyone in this community for what you do. Mm -hmm. I know there's yep. a lot of thankless jobs in here in, you know, in this community. Most of you are working in the areas that you love and and we know, people know, and um, and just, I want to thank you for what you're doing. Um, yep. And then also share your love and passion for FreeBSD with your friends. Think about if you're at a university, sharing FreeBSD with like your, um, I know there's like comp computing type of um, mm -hmm. groups. I know there's women in computing groups. Um, and um, and do an install fest, and we actually have that on our website on how to do that, and um, and also reach out to us if if mm -hmm. you want to do something but you're not sure what to do, and and reach out to one of us. You can always email at info at freebsdfoundation.org, mm -hmm. and yep. um, or if you have an idea, uh, share it with us because uh, we're just. We're just, we're here to support you. Uh, we're a nonprofit for the public good. Um, and we're trying to step in and, and help where we can. So, yeah, yeah so that would, those would be my final, final words. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Deb, so much for joining today and rounding out the end of our free BSD weekday celebrations, day week celebrations, however you want to say that. And um, as Deb mentioned, if you have ideas or you want to share your story, info at freebsdfoundation.org and either myself or Drew or somebody on Ann or Jason will get back with you. We'll capture your story. If you want to be on a video with myself or Drew, well, you can do that too. So um, thank you everybody for joining us. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you around. Bye. Wave, Deb. Thank you.